Hi, uh, this is my prediction of three heavyweight fights which took place in America this past weekend. I'm not going to dwell on two of them too much. Um, I thought I'd just throw them in the video just for the sake of it. So really, this is my post-fight reaction to Deontay Wilder versus Damon McCreary. But at the same time, I'm also going to do um, Steve Cunningham versus Jason Gavin and Thomas Adamek versus Travis Walker. Just get the two quick ones out of the way. Um, Steve Cunningham made his debut at heavyweight this past weekend. <coughs> he won a unanimous decision against Jason Gavin, so that is a good win for him. Um, I haven't seen the whole fight, but I've seen most of it, uh, and I thought he did, you know, a good job uh, moving up to heavyweight and, you know, winning in a unanimous decision, which is what I predicted. Um, I still don't think he's going to do much on the heavyweight scene simply because I think his punch resistance is going. I mean, we saw it in the Hernandez fight, and we've seen it before. And I just think that at heavyweight and in his, you know, um, increasing age, I just don't see him making a big impact. But, you know, good luck to him, best of luck to him. I think Steve Cunningham is one of the old throwback fighters of the world. The guy's fought them all. Check his record out. He's fought everyone, and he's just like Cole Froch and Andre Ward and Glenn Johnson, guys like that. He's fought everyone, and in some cases, twice. Um, and so, best of luck to him. Great fighter. Um, fights that I would like to see him fight at heavyweight would be with guys like, say, Thomas Adamek. I think that would be a good um, you know, rematch. Uh, or how about somebody like uh, maybe Antonio Tarver, if he wants to go back to heavyweight, or if Cunningham goes back down to cruiserweight. I mean, that fight has been... Um, you know, discussed before. Um, I know Cunningham was seeking a fight with Antonio Tarver not long ago. Um, so th those are my quick thoughts on Steve Cunningham. You know, good win in his heavyweight debut. Some good fights out there for him, but I don't think he's going to go too far at heavyweight. But, you know, just look at the size of heavyweights nowadays. They're immense. Um, Thomas Adamek versus Travis Walker. I predicted Adamek would win a unanimous decision, which he didn't. He won via a fifth round stoppage. Um, he looked good in doing so, I thought. I, I thought it was going to be not a drab affair, but I thought it would be a convincing unanimous decision for Thomas Adamek, but one in which he probably wouldn't excel and Travis Walker would cause him some issues because he's got, you know, a big punch. But it didn't play out like that at all, really. Um, I thought Adamek looked good. And in the fifth round, when he stopped him, he just piled on the pressure. I mean, he, he went nuts um, and got a really good stoppage. I mean, I know that Walker threw a, a last punch just, uh, just after Adamek had landed with about 15 or so punches. Um, Walker threw the last one, which was exactly when the referee had stepped in. But... That's irrelevant. I mean, you know, had the referee stepped in just a second earlier, um, he wouldn't have got that punch in. And, you know, that one punch wasn't going to um, cause Adamek any problems. So, good stoppage, in my opinion, for Adamek. And now, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Like I said in my first video, I said that um, his heavyweight record has been good, but also mixed in with some very drab opponents. You know, people like Vinny Madaloni aren't guys that Adamek should be fighting. He's he's an elite heavyweight. He's not a um, an upcomer like Tyson Fury who can get away with fighting guys like Vinny Madalone because it's a good win under his belt. Adamek has already done the Vinny Madalones of the world. He needs to be doing, you know, the bigger guys, the Pavetkins, um, level of fighters like that, like Kubrat, Pulev, etc. So I think, I'm almost sure of this, uh, that was for uh, an IBF number two spot, that fight, Adamek versus Walker, so he should now be fighting, I think it'll be the winner of Pulev versus Ustinov, which I think is a great fight, I think Pulev wins that one, um, so I'm looking forward to Pulev versus Adamek for hopefully an IBF title shot. And finally, uh, Deontay Wilder versus Damon McCreary. Now, Deontay Wilder now has 25 knockouts from 25. It might as well say 100 knockouts from 100. It could say one knockout from one. It doesn't matter. Look at the guys he's knocked out. Just have a little analysis of his record. And after you've had an analysis of his record, go and check out the fights that he has been fighting. Check them out on YouTube. Check them out on SoSo -So Boxing, which is another perfect 
sight. Let's pink bring the laptop over here. Look at the weights of guys that Deontay Wilder has been fighting. I said to you in my last video that I didn't even know who Jamie McCreary is. Checked out the video. The guy had tits. Boobs. We're fucking talking about a double D. We're talking... He had fucking tits. You know, I mean... No. <laughs> no. You don't fight a guy with tits. The days of Butterbean are over. Let's be professional about this. Damien McCree weighed in at 263 pounds. Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, but was it 263 pounds of pure muscle? No, it was 263 pounds of double D tits. No, you can't be fighting guys like that in your 25th fight. Um, Kirsten Manswell, who I did think was a good win, did think was a good win, but there's another guy who weighs in at 250 pounds. Owen Beck passed his best, 243 pounds, and then, you know, some normally sized human beings, and then we go down the list, and then more McDonald's workers. Dustin Nichols, 400 pounds! Dustin Nichols, so in his 11th fight, he was fighting a guy who would just come straight from having a fucking, a fucking family sized bucket mill at KFC. You don't fight guys in your 11th fight who have just come straight out of KFC. And, I, and I'm not joking. This is Have you actually ever seen Dustin Nichols? He's, he's notoriously one of the fattest fighters in history. The guy is an absolute blubber whale. Now, you're probably thinking, Oh, Ryan, don't be so mean to big fat fatties. It's not their fault they're so big and fat. You can't say that. This is a professional sport. If, if, um, if Usain Bolt turned up on the, at the track at 100 metres weighing this much, like some big fat fatty from some, you know, uh, American, what's it called, trailer park, you'd be going, oh, come on, you're not supposed to weigh in like a big trailer park man. No, this is a professional sport. You've got to fight people who are actually, you know, look like humans. So, uh, uh, Richard Green Jr., another one, 352 pounds. Where do they will these people out from? Like, I just joked about trailer parks, but seriously, it does seem to me like he's getting his opponents willed out from KFCs and trailer parks, and it's not on! It's not on! 11th fight, Dustin Nichols. Who was Tyson Fury fighting in his 11th fight? He was fighting guys like, you know, John McDermott, who, yeah, okay, fair enough, he's got about a D, uh, no, not a D, a, a B, he's got about a B cup, but that B cup may well be, you know, lying around the place, but... He is actually quite a good fighter. Somebody who stops Larry Olibamuo in one round is not a dreadful fighter. You can't say that about him. So anyway, my rant's over, but I thought I'd go through the quick the heavyweights fights quick the heavyweight fights quickly and press upon the fact that Deontay Wilder needs to fight people who look human. Because that is just not funny. It's ridiculous. So those are my thoughts on those heavyweight fights.